The following lesson is linked to learning outcome two, reading and viewing. It addresses the assessment standard that requires learners to explore and explain key features of texts and how they contribute to meaning in visual, audio and multimedia texts. Learners should be able to recognize the use of visual, audio and audiovisual techniques, such as the use of color, dialogue, music, sound, lighting, editing, framing, styles of shot, camera techniques, foregrounding and backgrounding. Hi, I'm Megan. So far in this series of lessons, we've been applying what we know about studying films to the short film Come See the Bioscope. This short film is based on the life of Sol Plyke. In today's lesson, we're going to be exploring how characters are presented in film, and we're going to see how this character has been portrayed in the film compared to the real character. By the end of today's lesson, you will be able to analyze how a character has been presented in a film. Generally, a film is only long enough to give us a brief glimpse into a character. So filmmakers have to use clever techniques to tell us as much about a character in as short a time as possible. Before we discuss how Sol Plyke has been presented, let's consider some techniques that filmmakers generally use. To begin with, we get clues about characters from what they look like, what they wear, and their body language. We also get clues about characters from how they speak and what they say, as well as what other people say about them and how they've been filmed. I'm sure you've heard the expression, first impressions count. Well, this also applies to characters in films. We can tell a lot about a person before that person or character has even opened his or her mouth. The casting director plays a very important role in creating a film. This person is responsible for choosing characters to play different roles. Whilst acting involves pretending to be someone else, this is made a lot easier if the actor resembles the character that he's going to play. In the case of the short film, Come See the Bioscope, it was even more important that the actor chosen to play the part of Sol Plyke looked like the real character. This is because he's playing the role of an historical figure and not a fictional or made-up character. As you can see from looking at this photograph of the real Sol Plyke and this clip of the actor, Ernest Nlovu, the person who cast or chose the characters for this film did an excellent job of selecting an actor who looks very similar to photographs of Sol Plyke. Choosing an actor who looks the part is half the battle won, but then that actor must be dressed in clothes that the real person might have worn at the time. This clothing helps to create a more realistic looking film. In our lesson on the introductory sequence, we already discussed how the actor is dressed. He isn't in traditional African dress, nor is he dressed like other African people whom we see later in the film. How would you describe his clothing, and what clues do his clothes give us about this character? The actor playing the role of Sol Plyke is dressed in formal Western clothing. He's wearing a smart suit and a bowler hat, and this for driving around in the hot, dusty Western Transvaal. His smart, expensive clothing and the fact that he is driving a car at a time when few people owned cars also give us clues that he was wealthier than the majority of African people at the time. In terms of what clothing says about a character, remember that first impressions are important. So far we've seen that Sol Plyke liked to dress like or emulate Europeans, even although he was a campaigner for African rights. What do you think this tells us about him? As we continue to watch the film, look out for other examples of where Sol Plyke is shown to act like Europeans. 
We have already considered what the character playing Sol Plyke looks like and how he is dressed. As we watch the next few sequences, we are going to pay close attention to his body language. Do you remember what body language means? Body language are your body's movements or gestures that say a lot about you as a person and what you're thinking. As we watch this next clip of the film, pay attention to the body language that the actor uses and see if you can work out what clues this is giving us. In this sequence, Plyke is meeting Musi, a young boy who lives in the village whom he makes friends with. Note how both characters are shown together at the same time. This helps to convey the idea that they will become friends and work together. We also see that Plyke is speaking kindly to Musi. He does not appear threatening or superior to the young boy. From watching that short scene, we see that Plyke treats characters with a genuine warmth and affection, even when the people that he is speaking to are younger and seemingly less important than himself. This politeness and friendliness is also shown later in the film when Musi takes Plyke to meet and stay with his grandmother. In this scene, we see how he is gently getting Musi's grandmother to share her story with him. Again, his body language is non-threatening and he is able to encourage her to talk. From the two clips that we've seen, we've noted that Plyke is a gentleman. He speaks to people with respect and treats even humble people as if they are really special. Now let's take a closer look at how Plyke speaks and what he says. As we watch the next few clips of Plyke, there are several things I want you to listen out for. Pay attention to the words he uses and his accent. And as well as listening to how he speaks, pay close attention to what he says. These words give us important clues into his character. Hello. When Plyke first meets Musi, he speaks to him in an African language and there are subtitles in English. Subtitles are the words that appear at the bottom of the screen. They are used to give extra information or translations. What does this tell you about Plyke? And why do you think the scriptwriter chose to start this conversation in an African language? The scriptwriter has been quite clever here. By including an extract from one of Plyke's poems, he's been able to give us even more clues about this character. From having listened to the poem, we realize that it's written in quite a formal academic style. This is very interesting, especially when we consider that Plyke received no formal education beyond primary school. We also see that he's a writer and author and that he has an interest in South Africa. Let's read the poem again. On the verdant bank of a country spring, Olive and I watching a pair of Kalahari partridges on their way. In the aerial trend, they look peculiarly well off. Let's focus on a couple of words that were used in this poem. The first interesting word is this word, verdant. Verdant means lush or green, but it's quite an unusual word and shows us that Plyke had an extensive vocabulary. In the next line, he talks about olive. From the voiceover, we learn that Olive is his daughter, so this shows that he's interested in his family and includes them in his writing. Then, in the final line, he talks about the Kalahari partridges in the aerial trend. This is quite an academic or poetic way of saying the birds flew off. But do you think this poem is just about flying birds? In the poem, the Kalahari partridges are described as well off. This is a personification because the birds have been given the human characteristic of being well-off or wealthy. One interpretation of this poem is that Clyke is inviting us to compare the partridges who are flying off in their aerial trend to him and Olive sitting on the riverbank. The birds appear to be well-off because they can come and go as they please and the Kalahari belongs to them which would not have been true for him and Olive at that point in South Africa's history. We've been able to work out a lot about the character Sol Plyke from the clues that we've been given. So far in this lesson, we've talked about what he looks like, what he wears, 
his body language, how he speaks, and what he says. We haven't yet considered the final two points, what other people say about him and how he's been filmed. But don't worry, we'll get to these in the next lesson. For now though, it's time for today's task. As you watch this short clip from the film Come See the Bioscope, consider the following question in groups. What clues do the character's words give us about this character? Focus on Plyke's replies to Musi in your answer. My father is in Johannesburg. He's working in the mines. He gave me these. Inside these is gold. Your father works very hard to extract the gold from the rock. Extract? Hmm. To take out. Did you know that you need a ton of stones like that just to make this much gold? A ton? About 40 mosses would weigh a ton. In today's lesson, we've watched a character and have seen how he's been portrayed in film. Believe it or not, you do this every time you watch a film or a TV show. It's important that you're aware of how to analyze a character, as this will make you a more informed and critical viewer of films. It'll also help you to answer any question you're asked about a character in film study tests or exams. Please join me for the next lesson. Goodbye.